You take it in your life That I don't want to go on this Arises your love You take it in this fight tonight Today's another day that I see There is no terrible way to win. There is only winning. Let me drive. I won't make a fool out of you. Every one of us has to find a reason to do this. You do it because you're driven. I was beginning to think I'd never be anything more than a piston-happy, lead-foot punk. Then this starts to happen. Somebody put it in your mind you gotta be perfect every time out of your failure. Well, forget that. Just forget it. You ready to put away your toys and grow up? Are you ready to make more money in one year than your father made in his whole life? Are you ready to become a real race car driver? When I won it was probably the last time I ever felt pure victory. Because I'm quicker than all of you. And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. But hell, isn't that what we're in this for? To stare death in the face and, and to cheat it? Come on, there's nobility in that. It's, 
It's like being nice. No pressure. Nobody breathing down my back, just driving because I left it pure. A lot of people go through life doing things badly. Racing is important to men who do it well. When you're racing, it's life. Anything that happens before or after, it's just waiting. I just hope when you do, that I'm there to see it. Racing. That's the name of the game, isn't it? Win or lose, put up a shot. Fine. Then let's race. race. Stay live on Downforce UK, brought to you by Clapham North MOT, Motorsport Days Live, Stopwatch Hospitality, and Trade Price Cars. Weeks of hard work have finally come to this moment. We are ready for the action. It is going to be an absolutely spectacular run as all of the competitors prepare themselves for battle here in Valencia. We are going to have an absolutely fantastic battle. The preparations have come to a very exciting point here at Valencia as we prepare for the action, drama and absolutely fantastic battles that await us in these three finals across Mini, Junior and Senior as we prepare for action in the 2020 IARMY Winter Cup. Jake Sampson here from the starting grid here at the Catadromo Internacional Lucas Guerrero in Valencia in southern Spain and it is an absolutely glorious scene that awaits us here on the mini grid. We can see after his fantastic performance in the pre-final Sandro Perez will line up at the front end of the starting grid. He's looking really exceptional at the moment. He doesn't want to talk to us. He's already in the heat of the moment. He just wants to get himself ready for the action and the drama. I am, however, going to grab a word with the man in the second position on the starting grid. He's having a quick picture, but uh, we'll grab a word with him as he comes from the front row of the grid. Leo Robertson. Leo, it's been a fantastic start to your day. Here in second position on the grid for the final, but there's a lot of hard work to do. Yeah, hopefully we can get up to first, but starting on the outside row and hopefully it's a good start so we can get up into the front half and hopefully win from there. Now you do have an advantage because of course these guys who are there in first and third working together for Monlau, they've not actually been to this event before, you have from last year, so you know how tough it can get in the final, so I'm guessing you're drawing on that experience to try and make a good start? Yeah. So what exactly is the strategy with you up front, almost on your own here, up at the front end? No teammates until you go about three or four cart legs back. How do you think it's going to be at the start? Um, it's going to be quite chaotic. I think it's going to be... There'll be there'll be a big pack um, and, it, and, it, and I think a few people will get away at the front. Well, hopefully it's going to be a successful one for you. Good luck and we'll see you at the finish. Yeah, thank you. Leah Robinson preparing for all of the activity and the drama that's coming. There are some exceptional talented drivers within this field though. Third position on the grid, Jan Paral, one of the stars of the weekend thus far for the Monlau Competition squad. They are looking forward to a really exciting race battle. From first and third on the grid, the teammates as well. They had a great battle, if you remember, a short while ago in the pre-final. They're looking to get the job done again here in the final. Hugo Marti starting from fourth position. What a momentous weekend this is for the squad as well. A new team for Spain and a new team for the Army Euro Paddock, the Ian TMC squad. Hugo Marti is going to have a very strong run there from the second row. From the third row of the grid it is the very impressive Portuguese driver Santiago Alves who has come through from the back end of the field to charge through to fifth position on the starting grid and he is going to have a pretty sensational run from fifth position. Alex Martinez in sixth position on the grid for the Praga and the Monster Evo chassis running very well again from the third row of the grid. He should be one to watch out for. Over on the fourth row of the grid it is the young man from Oliver Roland Motorsport, yeah. Lewis Werrell is here on the fourth row. Lewis, it's going to be an interesting one from the inside line of the fourth row. That's actually a very advantageous place to be. How are you thinking about things at the moment? Well, just try and get to the front as quick as we can and then see what happens at the end. Now, so far up to this point in your career, this is actually the biggest race you've done, but you've, over, or you've come into every single race so far with the same can-do attitude, just breathe, get on with it, get uh, up, the, up the order as high as you possibly can. How easy do you think it's going to be off the start? Uh, could be easy, it might not be, but we've just got to see how it is. And well, I know the whole team is behind you, as is your team boss Oliver Rowland back in the UK. Good luck, have a great one. Thank you. 
Lewis Worrell and the crew going to have a really strong race if anything is to go by from their current reputation. Josef Martin for the FA Racing Squad of Spain. He is there on the eighth row of the grid as well from row four. Good to see him all ready to go. And he's obviously very focused on his objectives. I've got time, I think, for one more uh, quick interview. So let's talk to the man on the inside of the fifth row. Come on, Cajal. You know you want to have a quick word with us, really. Cajal, this is your first weekend in Europe as well. And you've come from the tail end of the grid, charging your way through to the front. Are you surprised by how quickly you've managed to make progress? Yeah, I'm very surprised. I didn't think I'd be at the front end on only my first weekend in Europe. Now, you've actually got an advantage if you can get towards your teammate, Leo, because if the two of you can work together, you can start to get in to the Monlau pair. But it's going to be quite a tough start. How are you focused on the race so far? I think the main objective is just to get through the pack as quick as possible to get to Leo and then just try and push away. Sounds good. You're happy with a top 10 finish, whatever, though, for this being your first weekend. You must be very impressed. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Good job, Cajal. See you at the finish. Thank you. What an amazing debut. It's been absolutely fantastic from Cajal. Filippo Sala, the Italian, is going to be lining up on the outside of the fifth row as well. He's going to have a really strong race from his position. And then, of course, we have Tizi Cugnini, the Swiss driver. He's been absolutely on fire all the way through the weekend as well. Great to see the young spirit star doing such a strong job. Thomas Strauven is here on the outside of the sixth row as well. It's going to be a great run from the young Belgian. He's got a good opportunity to make progress. And then, of course, from the seventh row of the grid, we have Hugo Sanchez on the inside sideline and how about this for a comeback story Adrian Benito is right here on the inside line of the seventh row again on the Praga monster and he has come all the way from the back of the field after losing at times in qualifying and he has surged his way through you've got to look all the way through this field though not just at the sharp end because there are so many drivers who are going to want to charge their way through some great comeback stories all the way through Kian Fardin the Swiss driver is just in the row behind us here and he's been fast all weekend he has a great chance to come through as does the Spaniard for kids to win or Jean he's got a good opportunity. We also have Thibaut Gillard for the Eurokartic squad. He's been trying to find his way through the field, and he has done so as well. Thibaut Ramakers is there in the field up towards the sharp end as well. In the midfield, you've got quite a few drivers trying to get their way back into a solid position, and there's all sorts of overtaking to come through. Keep an eye on 30th in the field as well. Luna Flusia was the fastest in her group in qualifying in Friday's pro uh, qualifying session, and she's going to be trying to fight her way through the field as well after what's been a bit of a tricky weekend for her. But as you can see, there are so many great drivers within this grid they all have exceptional talent and they've all come here onto the world stage and put on an absolutely exceptional show we know that it's obviously going to be very tricky for them to predict uh, who's going to have the best strategy coming into the race but they all have their targets they all have their objectives they want to put on as good a show as they possibly can and you've got to remember that this is going to be the longest race of the weekend for them. It's also the hottest point of the race as well, because obviously we've got uh, air temperature climbing all the time. The sun is absolutely baking on the circuit. The wind is still reasonably uh, strong, but it's not going to be as problematic as it was last year. That is for certain. And it's going to be bone dry conditions. These new uh, fantastic tyres from Comet are obviously going to be giving us an absolutely fantastic run. And the guys are obviously very well aware of their objectives in the open laps in the formation laps they've got to make sure that the tires and brakes are warmed up to their optimum temperatures there's going to be a lot of dynamics in this mini race as well you've got to remember that we've got Sandro Perez and Jan Paral who are here on the inside line now the two teammates worked beautifully together in the pre-final they stretched out a bit of a gap and then spent the last two laps fighting amongst themselves the objective of all of these guys around them of Leo of Hugo of Santiago their job is to try and break that deadlock because they're there in first and third if they get into the first corner first and second it's going to be quite difficult to overhaul them from there. So all of these guys have a very serious objective. They know how to get to that point. And they've all been in similar situations before in their local, national, regional series. Here on the international stage, some of them for the very first time. The pressure is on for these guys aged between 8 and 12 years of age. But they are taking it in their stride. It's wonderful to see just how professional these guys are behaving around on the circuit. It is 13.24 local time. I'm going to disappear and head up to the commentary box because these guys are ready for a show and hopefully you've got a decent, comfortable seat and vantage point. All of the fans here on the gantry are getting ready for an absolutely spectacular show, as of course is our clerk of the course, Martin Bean, who's going to be regulating the start. And obviously, when he decides that the lights go out, that's when we'll have the most exciting race in the minis we've had all weekend. 
So the battle is going to be very fierce and intense for all of the competitors. I'm going to make my way off the circuit and leave them to it now because obviously these guys have got an amazing race ahead of them. It will be tough and it will be very, very exciting, but we will see some absolutely sensational racing from them as they gear up for the big one. So here at the Carta de Roma Internacional, Lucas Guerrero for the fourth time. It is obviously a tough battle that awaits them in the mini category. In 2017, the title was won in fabulous form by Maximus Meyer. In 2018, it was Miguel Pedro Luzaraga who got the job done. Last year, it went to the British driver, Freddie Slater. In 2020, nobody knows who's going to get the title won, but there's certainly an amazing cast who are going to try and get the title won. So the battle is definitely going to be very tight and intense. Hello to all of those of you listening along via Downforce Radio's iArmy Radio channel. It's going to be an absolutely fantastic battle for all of the competitors as they race for supremacy. And you're going to have an absolutely sensational race battle to listen to. You can, of course, watch along either with the live timing feed from RGMMC and Apex Timing. Or, of course, you can watch along on the live stream as well. Plenty of opportunities to watch the racing as well as listen to it, so you don't miss a moment. So the race battle is going to be close, it's going to be hard but fair, and there will be some absolutely spectacular race battles to come. Stay tuned, the next race is the Mini X30 final. Hi, I'm Tom Ingram and you're listening to Downforce Radio. Hi, I'm Jacques Villeneuve, you're listening to Downforce Radio. Hi, I'm Bruno Senna, you're listening to Downforce Radio. Hi, I'm Chris Hoy and you're listening to Downforce Radio. Hi, I'm Landon Norris and you're listening to Downforce Radio. You're listening to Race Day Live on Downforce UK, brought to you by Clapham North MOT, Motorsport Days Live, Stopwatch Hospitality and Trade Price Cars. For many of these young men and women, it is their toughest race of their career. It is the Mini X30 final of the 2020 IAMI Winter Cup. They have raced several times over the course of the weekend to get up to this point, but this is the moment of truth. The race they've all been building up to. Weeks and months of preparation have led to this moment, and for many of them, this is the biggest race of their lives. On the front of the grid, it is the 931 of Sandro Perez, who will run at the front end of the field. Alongside will be Leo Robinson of Great Britain for Fusion Motorsport. On the second row, it will be Jan Peral in third position on the grid for the Monlau Competition squad. And in fourth will be Hugo Marti for E and TMC Motorsport. Then Santiago Alves will be there in fifth position from Alex Martinez. Lewis Werrell on the grid with Josef Martin from Cajal Clark, the rookie from Great Britain, and Filippo Sala of Italy in tenth. Tiziano Cusnini in 11th position on the grid from Thomas Straven in 12th from Hugo Sanchez and Adrian Benito with Raul Janjarin and Kian Fardin in the top 16. Dennis Curivali in 17th on the grid from Timur Ramakas and then it will be Raul Martinez and Marius Paddyberg from Edu Robinson and Daniel Dalakian. Thomas Behrman 23rd on the grid from Roman Kamyab then Sochero Shioda and Luis Navo, Matt Corby and Luna Flusha from Eduardo Dominguez and Otto Valsort, then Timo Gelard and Noah Montero, Hector Gerling and Maria Nito from Freddie Housley and Bosco Arias. 15 laps on the board, the live timing screens are ready, and after these 15 laps we will have our fourth IAMI Winter Cup mini title winner. Who will join Max Meyer, Miguel Peru Lozaraga and of course, Freddie Slater from 12 months ago in the Hall of Fame. It's going to be an interesting battle as the yellow light comes on on the edge of the start finish line. That is the signal for 30 seconds to go. And these young racers are about to head into the unknown. It's going to be an absolutely spectacular race. 15 laps and the toughest challenge that awaits them. But this is what they've been preparing for, this is what they came here to do. It's time for the X30 Minis of 2020 in the IAMI Winter Cup to race for the title. 
Sandro Perez and Leo Robinson on the front row from Jan Paral and Hugo Marti, Santiago Alves and Alex Martinez from Luis Wellow and Yusuf Martin, then Cajal Clark and Filippo Sala, Tiziano Cushnini and Thomas Straven from Hugo Sanchez and Adrian Benito, Raul Jardin and Kian Fardin. A little bit of a late start for Luna Flusha, but she does now get going. So in behind Kian Fardin, it is Dennis Koulibaly and Timur Ramakas, then Raul Martinez and Marius Barryberg. Edu Robinson and Daniel Dalakian from Thomas Behrman and Roman Kamyab, Sochira Shioda and Luis Devoe, Matt Corby and Luna Flusha, Eduardo Dominguez, Arta Valsort, Thibaut Jalad, Noah Montero, Hector Gerling, Maria Nito, Freddie Housley, and Bosco Arias. Two exploratory laps of the circuit. Everybody is close in, wanting to watch the action. And of course, it is going to be a very tough battle. They have come from all over the world to race in this particular event. It is the first major X30 event of the 2020 season, certainly for the European Brigade. And obviously, the winner of this race not only wins a free pass to the IAMI Euro Series of 2020, promoted by RGMMC, but also tickets to the big show, the IAMI International Finals in October. The biggest race of any IAMI X30 driver's career. So they get their tyres and brakes up to temperature with the patrol around the circuit. Two laps of exploratory around the 1428 metre circuit that is the Cartodromo Internacional Lucas Guerrero. Just a few miles away from the MotoGP circuit and even a little bit further away from the Formula One racetrack that hosted the European Grand Prix from 2008 to 2012. This is motorsport country in this part of Spain. Many great talents have come from these hills and this countryside to go on to big things in the world of sports cars, single-seaters, motorbikes and more. And now we could well see another talent display their courage, determination and skill around the Valencia kart circuit as they battle for the 2020 IAMI Winter Cup. Sandra Perez and Leo Robinson, Jan Paral and Hugo Marti from Santiago Alves and Alex Martinez, Luis Wirrell and Yusuf Martin, Cajal Clark and Filippo Sala, Tiziano Cuginini and Thomas Straven, then Hugo Sanchez, Adrian Benito, Junjaran, Fari, Curivali, Ramakas, Martinez, Barry Berg, Robinson, Dalakian, Behrman, Kamyab, Shioda, Lavo, Corby, Flusha, Dominguez, Valsort, Gelard, Montero, Gerling, Nito, Housley and Arias. Here we go, it's a false start. False start straight away. So clearly the drivers were not quite in their positions and uh, Martin Bean, Clark of the course, elects to send them around for another exploratory lap of the circuit. So they are not quite in position, so they will go around one more time. An additional formation lap always increases the pressure and the stress on the drivers. And there's actually a spin on the formation lap. That is the 920 that's got around in the chicane. That is Sochiro Shioda. And there's a problem for Maria Nito in the pits. Maria Nito in the pits has got a problem. That is an absolute disaster for the Portuguese lady. She's had a great weekend as well. The stress is bubbling over for Maria Nito. This has been so much stronger for her in 2020 than it was in 2019. She was fourth on the grid for all of her heats. Incredible fast speed from her in qualifying. And now she's just got to wait and watch as the FAA racing crew try desperately to get her back into the race. And the thing is, they're only allowed one mechanic to work on the cart. You're not allowed to have two drivers, two mechanics touch the cart. So it's going to be very stressful. The assistant there can only sit and watch, essentially, as the mechanic tries desperately to get Marianito's cart back into, into the race again. But I think they're fighting a losing battle. Here they come. Perez, Robinson, Peral, Marti, Alves, Martinez, Wero, Martin, Clark and Salah. Let's race to Valencia. That's much better. And away we go. Perez gets a good start off the grid, and off the inside, his teammates immediately going to go for it. Jan Paral into the first corner, and they take the lead, one and two now. But Jan Paral gets the best start, 9.32 in front of 9.31, and in fact, it looks as though there's been a bit of a very slow start. As Santiago Alves has gone into second position, third place, that's Luis Werrell. Lewis Weller has charged through to third as Maria Nito now creeps up out of the pit lane, and down to fifth comes Werrell because it's a fast starting uh, fusion, that's got to be Leo Robinson who gets into fourth place in behind Sandro Perez. Robinson's getting stuck in immediately into third position. Can he get there when he squeezes Sandro Perez wide? That's enough. And here comes Cajal Clark. Cajal Clark is up in the fifth place. Make that sixth because there goes Hugo Marti. Now he's going to get fifth on the inside of Sandro Perez. So Jan Perel leads it. Santiago Alves. Then it's Leo Robinson. Marti, Clark and Perez down in sixth position now. 
through the S's at the end of a very busy first lap. Absolutely incredible racecraft so far as they battle across the line. Jan Paral in front of Santiago Alves. Here comes Marti and Perez. They're both going to dive on the inside of Clark. In fact, Sandro Perez is going to get past both of them into fourth position. Absolutely terrific racing so far. So it's Paral, Alves, Robinson, Perez, Marti, Clark, Werrell, Martinez, Sanchez and Cusnini in the top ten from Straven. Then it is Martin, Kudavali, Benito, Jean-Jaren, Fardin and Martinez. So a very tough race at the moment. Oh, Cahal Clark's made a mistake on the exit of the hairpins and that's cost him a couple of places. Lewis Werrell picks up the pieces and gets into uh, sixth position, I think it is. A very strong run through the race. And it's been an absolutely spectacular battle. So they continue to battle away. Beral, Alves, Robinson, Clark, Marty, Perez. Sandro Perez is tucked in there trying to make his move and Santiago Alves is trying to push away with Jan Paral. He actually rolls off the power to try and get a better exit out of the chicane. So Santiago Alves, the Portuguese driver, is out in front. Battling away with the lead up, Jan Paral. Sandro Perez sets the fastest lap of the race. Leo Robinson is third. So three different teams in the top three places. Jan Paral running well. Santiago Alves in second place and Leo Robinson in third. Now there's a message come up on the timing screen that says start under investigation. Now I'm not sure what exactly they're looking at from the start, but certainly something is not quite right as far as the officials are concerned. And it'll be up to the likes of Clark of the Course, Martin Bean and his uh, race control officials, David Manchester and Chris McCarthy to have a look at it. But certainly it says start under investigation on the timing screen. So I'm not sure what decision they're going to have to make, but it could change the face of the race. Jan Paral leads Santiago Alves. Leo Robinson encouraging Sandro Perez to go with him rather than overtake him so that they can catch up to the two men up front. And they're definitely doing that. So Paral and Alves are being caught rapidly by Robinson and Sanchez. Perez Sanchez, they're in fourth position. Sandro Perez Sanchez in fourth. Then it's Marty, Alex Martinez, Luis Vero, and then it's Hugo Sanchez from Cajal Clark. And uh, Tiziano uh, Cusnini, sorry, from Straven, Martin Curavalli, Jean Jardin, Benito, Ramakas Lavo, and Delakian from Ra Martinez and Kim Farin. Some good battles already made up, and it looks as though Maria Nito, unfortunately, is out of the race. They tried to get her started, and it hasn't worked out. Problems, too, of a mechanical nature for, or certainly a difficult nature for, Luna Fuchsia. Very tough race for her. She's down at the back of the field after some incidents in the first couple of laps. But there's some great racecraft all the way through. You're watching Leo Robinson and Sandro Perez set off after the leaders. Peral and Alves. Jan Peral leads. Santiago Alves is second. Leo Robinson is third in front of Sandro Perez. Then Alex Martinez has got past Hugo Martinez. Uh, sorry, Hugo Marti, I should say. So they battle into the final chicane. And still these guys are starting to make ground on the two leaders. Peral, Alves, Robinson, Perez. A couple of seconds back. In fifth now is Alex Martinez of the Praga team. Luis Werrell has crept onto the back of Hugo Marti as they battle for the top six. And in eighth place now is Cahal Clark in front of Tiziano Cusnini of the Spirit Racing team. The very highly rated Swiss ace is closing up on Cahal Clark. And in tenth place is the 924. That is Hugo Sanchez in front of Straven and Kudivali from Yusuf Martin and Raul Jarvan. The battle raging on lap five of 15. The longest race of the weekend for our X30 Minis. And I think we've had a very tough battle for the races up front. Oh, and there's a bit of a spin in the back of the field. Two or three carts going all over the place in the back end of the field. A couple of drivers hopping over each other. So that got a little bit messy and scrappy in the back of the field. Hopefully they're able to continue. Looks like they have. But Leo Robinson in front of Sandro Perez as they chase down the two leading drivers, Perez and Alves. And I think on the next lap, we could have a four-way scrap for the victory. Down the straight, in the slipstream, Leo Robinson is making up big grounds on the leader. Santiago Alves could do with making an overtaking move soon because Robinson is now right underneath him. He might have run out of time to do so. So Jan Paral, Santiago Alves, Leo Robinson and Sandro Perez, then Alex Martinez and Hugo Marti. Leo Robinson in a second now. He gets Santiago Alves and in third comes Sandro Perez. So Robinson and Perez both get past Santiago Alves as they duel over position. Alex Martinez is in fifth place for Hugo Marti. 
Then it is Cajal Clark in seventh from Werrell. He's doing beautifully in front of Hugo Sanchez, Cusnini and Straven. Kudavali is there in twelfth. And then it's Yusuf Martin and Roljan Jardin. So Jan Paral still leads the way for the moment, but it's a four-man scrap. Paral, Robinson, Perez, Alves. And there's a massive amount of speed being gained as Perez closes up on his teammate. Is Robinson going to go for the move? Yes, he does. In the final chicane. Not going to get through. Not when Jan Paral is going to slam the door shut like that. But this is the proper race now. Six laps completed, nine to go. And Baral is defending. Up the inside comes Santiago Alves. On Sanchez. And up the inside comes Neil Robinson to get back into third. So a big moment there as Jan Baral leads the way. Robinson second now. Oh, sorry, Alves now second, I should say. Then it is Neil Robinson and Sandro Perez Sanchez. So they come through once again. Out of the left hand hairpin. Pushing on on the far side. Terrific racing around this Valencia circuit. They are putting in such a magnificent show. Down the short stretch to the hairpin. Jan Paral continues to lead the way here. So Jan Paral in front of Santiago Alves. Then in third it is Neil Robinson from Sandro Perez. The top four still locked together. Any one of these four could take the victory. And it's going to be an absolute barnstorm of a race. Alves now trying to get the move on the inside of Jan Paral into the chicane. He has a think about it. He actually backs off the throttle a little to give himself a better chance of going for it in the first corner. He's going to get some support this time from Leo Robinson. Can he make a move down into the first corner? He's going to dive for it. Lovely move from Santiago Alves. And he takes the lead. Robinson's going to get the both. Brilliant from Robinson, the door was enough open to stop on the inside, and now here comes Jan Baral, he retakes the lead. The lead changes three times in three corners, and now Perez is going to move up in a second position. Amazing racing here in the X30 Mini. But the lead changes three times in the space of three corners. Absolutely incredible, now Leo Robinson back on the inside of Jan Baral. So, uh, sorry, that is Sandro Perez. He gets through in a second place behind Jan Baral. So, Baral, Robinson. Then it is Sandro Perez in front of Santiago Alves. How long is this race going to keep going? We've got a crash. Looks like somebody's gone off in the chicane. Can't quite see who it is from there, but look at the top four. They're absolutely together. Up the inside now comes Robinson. That's for the lead in the chicane, and he's there. So, Baral and Sandro Perez are now second and third, with Santiago Alves pushing like crazy. Seven laps to go, eight completed, we're beyond half distance. And unfortunately, it is the hard charging Bosco Arias who is out of the race. Well, he took a victory in the heats yesterday, so a bitter disappointment for Bosco Arias. It was looking so good at one stage. Here comes the move from Jan Paral. He gets through on Leo Robinson. Jan Paral on home soil looks like he could become the third different Spanish winner of the X30 Mini class. Maximus Meyer did it in 2017. Miguel Pérez-Zavaga did it in 2018. But here comes Robinson to spoil the party. Up the inside. And Sandro Pérez gets in a second place past Jan Baral. Santiago Alves now in P4. As they come through on the right-hander. On to the back straight again. Reset. Focus. Breathe. Down the back straight. Glued together these two Montlau Competition carts as they get up towards the break. He's over the chicane. Robinson again. Second, Baral. Third, Perez. Fourth, Alves. Across the line. The top three absolutely bolted together. Into the first corner. And meanwhile, behind them, this is the battle for fifth place. Cajal Clark and Lewis Wero are fifth and sixth in front of Alex Martinez. The Brits have stormed their way through to the top five. If anything happens up front, they could be in with a podium. You never know. Cajal Clark and Lewis Wero still battling there in fifth and sixth. But here's the top four. Robinson, Perez... Peral and Alves. You've got to time this right. Five and a half laps to go. You can't just afford to go Banzai up the inside and hope it sticks. You've got to be calculated. Interestingly, Sandro Perez rolls off the power as Peral tries to take on Robinson. He's got an opportunity to get back on terms with his teammate. They've lost about a car length, but that's not going to be a problem down the back straight. The two Monlau carts will pull together. They're trying to drop Santiago Alves and leave it just for the three of them now. Is there going to be a move for the lead? Yes, there is. Up the inside comes Peral. And so too does Sandro Perez. So Sandro Perez leads. Peral second. And Robinson third now from Santiago Alves. And now look at that. They've got a lead. That's what they wanted. They wanted a gap. It's only a cart length. 
So now Robinson needs to get some help from Santiago Alves to close up. But if those two start pulling away in the next couple of laps, it's going to be a two-man battle and that's all there is to it. So it's up to Robinson and Alves to close up. They have done so again. So it's still a four-way fight. Ten down, five to go. Two-thirds distance covered in the X30 mini final in the Army Winter Cover 2020 here in Valencia. Down to the left hand hairpin. Focus. Breathe. Keep it together. Through the hairpin. Cahal Clark and Lewis Well are doing everything they can to close up on the leading bunch. It's always going to be a tough fight. Through the right hairpin. Onto the back straight once more. The two Monlau competitions are trying to get away from the two men behind. Leo Robinson and Santiago Alves. Alves assists Robinson. Closing up on the two men in front. They've got to keep this going. Four laps to go. 11 completed and there's four remaining. Alves working with Robinson. The close up is going to go for the move. Alves gets through on the inside. Does he have Robinson? Yes. Third position for the middle arc. So third position for Santiago Alves. Now he's going to try and chase after the two men up front. Sandro Perez and Jan Paral. But if he gets a decent run of it, he might get a chance for the victory. Santiago Alves. No Portuguese driver has won the Army Winter Cup yet. But there's not going to be too long for this race. He could still have a good chance of it. Three and a half laps remaining. And Jan Paral is trying to get away with Sandro Perez up front. The race continues. The battle is raging up front. Santiago Alves gets back onto the toe of the two men up front. And Leo Robinson is waiting in the wings in fourth place. Santiago Alves now with a great chance to crack the two nuts in front. Here they come. On La Competition's two men, Sandro Perez and Jan Paral, first and second, trying to get away from Santiago Alves. A change of position though, Jan Paral gets through into the first position. Now Santiago Alves gets a good run off the draft. He's rolled off the power, he needs to keep pushing. Leo Robinson's now going to get through on the inside line. Robinson's going to go for third position. He takes third. So Robinson now into P3 past Santiago Alves. Three laps to go. And now it is Jan Paral who leads Sandro Perez. They come through the chicane, up towards the long technical section of the course, into the right hairpin. Blend off the power, back on the, on the throttle. Out through the left, two left apexes. Jan Paral in front of Sandro Perez, Leo Robinson in front of Santiago Alves, with Cajal Clark in a fantastic fifth, and Lewis Wellen in sixth. This is going to be a close one to the finish between these two, and if they squabble too early... And it could be as anything as early as this lap. And the two men behind have a great chance to steal the victory. Robinson and Alves are in a very powerful position here in third and fourth. They can't afford to let these guys get too far ahead. But if they start to squabble too dearly, then it's going to really mess them up. And it could be Robinson and Alves that pounces down out of the final turn. Still they push down the main straight. Sandro Perez wants to see what the gap is back to the two men behind. It's still pretty sizable, and here comes Lewis Well on the inside of Cahal Clark, and that's opened the door for Thomas Straven. Straven gets into sixth place behind Well. Good move from the Oliver Roman Motorsport driver, though. Into P5, Lewis Well takes the initiative. Sixth for Thomas Straven, and in seventh place, it is Cahal Clark. Sanchez, Martinez, and Curavali in the top ten from Hugo Martinez, Rojan Jardin. And then it's Yusuf Martin from Kuznini, Laveau, Delakian, Romakas, Sala, Benito and Montero. A lap and a half to go. Who's going to get the title? Jan Baral or Sandro Perez? Perez was so good at timing it last time. He got the lead into the penultimate lap and never looked back from there. Down the back straight. This is the moment that Sandro Perez has been waiting for. Into the right kink. He's going to get the lead. Brilliant. But can he shut the door in time for his teammate Jan Baral to come back? Yes. So yet again, Sandro Perez snatches the victory with one lap to go. But Robinson and Alves are not done yet. They're still closing in. The teammates are going to go to battle now. Leo Robinson is right there for third. This is one of those races where the victory is what you're after more than anything else. And Jan Peral steals back the lead on the last tour. Robinson's going for it on the inside. Second place. Alves through into third. A little nudge to Robinson. And back on the inside now comes Sandro Perez. Into third once more. But Jan Peral has got the gap up to the guys behind him. Jan Peral makes the critical move in the first chicane. And Alves is battling to keep Sandro Perez at bay. He gets through on the inside line for third. Great run from Santiago Alves. But he needs to keep the door firmly shut for Sandro Perez. 
But I'm fairly sure that after some brilliant tactics and some great race strategy, Jan Barrel is going to have this one through the double right apex. Max Meyer in 2017, Miguel Barrel in 2018, 2019, it was Freddy Slater. This year, it's Jan Barrel! Super victory! Jan Barrel has won the Army Winter Cup 2020 with a sensational drive in front of Sandro Perez and Leo Robinson. Santiago Alves in a sensational fourth from Lewis Weller and Cajal Clark. But what a race! And Jan Barrel from Spain becomes the third different Spaniard to win the Army Winter Cup in the mini category. And the fourth Spaniard ever to do so. Fantastic. Jan Peral takes the flag from Sandro Perez and Leo Robinson. Santiago Alves is fourth from Luis Willow and Cajal Clark. Then Thomas Strowman and Hugo Sanchez. Dennis Curavalli is ninth from Alex Martinez. Raul Janjarin and Yusef Martin in the top 12. 13th place goes to Louis Laveau. And then Hugo Marti from Tijano Cuginini. Timot Ramakers and Daniel Dalakian in front of Filippo Sala, Adrian Benito and Noah Montero rounds out the top 20. From Kian Farin and Raul Martinez, Eddie Robinson and Hector Gerling. Then it is Marius Barryberg from Matt Corby, Luna Flusha, Arthur Valsort and Sochiro Shiolda. Timo Gillard rounds out the 30. And then it's Eduardo Dominguez, Freddie Halsley, Roman Kamyab and Thomas Behrman with only Bosco Arias and Marian Nito failing to see the flag. What a battle! An absolutely exceptional race, but the title winner in 2020 is another Spaniard. For the fourth time, a Spanish driver wins in the Army Winter Cup after Max Meyer, Marty Boyer, and Miguel Pedro Zaraga. The fourth is Jan Peral. Absolutely fantastic battle in the minis. What a conclusion to what has been an absolutely sensational week of racing. And now, of course, we get ourselves ready for the next encounter, which is going to be the X30 Junior Final. And that is going to be one heck of a race. Dan Ginshaw from pole position. Who knows what's going to happen next? What a battle awaits us.
There is no terrible way to win. There is only winning. Let me drive. I won't make a fool out of you. Every one of us has to find a reason to do this. You do it because you're driven. I was beginning to think I'd never be anything more than a piston-happy, lead-foot punk. Then this starts to happen. Somebody put it in your mind you got to be perfect every time out of your failure. Well, forget that. Just forget it. You ready to put away your toys and grow up? Are you ready to make more money in one year than your father made in his whole life? Are you ready to become a real race car driver? When I won, it was probably the last time I ever felt pure victory. Because I'm quicker than all of you. And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. Oh, hell, isn't that what we're in this for? To stare death in the face and, and to cheat it? Come on, there's nobility in that. It's, it's like being knights. No pressure. Nobody breathing down my back, just driving because I left it pure. A lot of people go through life doing things badly. Racing is important to men who do it well. When you're racing, it's life. Anything that happens before or after, it's just waiting. I just hope when you do, that I'm there to see it. Racing. That's the name of the game, isn't it? Win or lose, put up a show. Fine. And let's race. race. UK, brought to you by Clapham North MOT, Motorsport Days Live, Stopwatch Hospitality, and Trade Price Cars. The mini battle was already pretty exceptional, but now we get ourselves ready for the Junior X30 final of the 2020 Ayami Winter Cup. And so far, it's already been pretty spectacular. We've got some great racing to come here from the front of the grid. We've got two exceptional Brits beside each other on the front row. Daniel Ginchard lines up in pole position for the final for the KR Sport team. His first outfit, his first running with the outfit, and here in Europe, he has already put on a bit of a show over the course of the weekend. But beside him, back where he belongs from his point of view, is Bart Harrison for the Mick Barrett Racing Team. He was up there after qualifying. He's had to fight his way back into position, but now that is where he relies. Aaron Walker has fought back valiantly after the difficulties of yesterday as well. He was the fastest of all on Friday in every single session, and now he's there on the inside line of the second row. And across the way from him is the ever-consistent, ever-strong Freddy Spindlow. From fourth position on the grid, he is sure to be an exciting character in this race. However, the man who was nearly unbeaten in the heats yesterday starts from fifth position. Alfie Rigby, after a heroic run in the pre-final, he is now on the inside line for the third row. And he's got two teammates in Freddy Spindlow and Dan Ginchard to duel with. But what a spectacular comeback on the outside of the third row. Marcus Lutzio, third in last year's Ayama Euro Series, and now he's on the third row again in the final here at the Winter Cup. Quite an exceptional comeback. However, that's two comeback stories that we've already mentioned, but these two 
quite exceptional from the Strawberry Racing Squad, Yavan David of Sri Lanka and the Brit Edward Pearson, both of them in their first outing for Strawberry Racing in the Ayami Euro Paddock and they're on the fourth row after two heroic drives in the pre-final. The two, the two of them are now likely to team up and work together to try and push through with their teammate Aaron Walker to head through to the front of the field. Any one of those eight can get the victory and all of them have the ability to get there. However, the man who won his first ever Junior X30 race is Freddie Slater and that was yesterday in the morning heat. I'm gonna have a quick word with him because he's the only one who isn't sat in his uh, cart ready to go. Freddie. Fantastic start so far. Things look pretty uh, hectic out there, but you're on the inside in the top 10. What can you predict is going to happen? It's just going to be a hack and I'm just going to keep going. And when the checkered flag comes out, it's only the best I can do. So I'm just going to try my hardest and get to the front and see if we can win this. It's fascinating because there are so many international drivers here through the field and within the top 10 there's only one who's not from Great Britain and that's Ollie Pilke and he races in Britain half the time so you guys really have stormed this particular grid. Yeah we've definitely done really well like the Brits have. Um, it's only one person that can win now so it's going to be good. Sounds good to me mate. Good luck. Thank you. I would, have talked to all of, I would have talked to all of them, of course, but there's only a handful of Peter time that you have to uh, discuss with all of these people. Uh, Oli Pilker, as I mentioned, is there in 10th position on the grid. His comeback from the back of the field has been absolutely extraordinary. The leading Spaniard, though, Bruno Del Pino, is there in 11th on the grid, and he and the TDK team have been absolutely exceptional. And all the way through the weekend, Bruno has battled for victory pretty much every time, so he is definitely still in with a shout. The new team to the paddock, though, is the Oliver Roland Motorsport team, and Brandon Carr has fought his way from the mid-pack after qualifying and now he's right up at the sharp end in 12th position on the starting grid with his teammate Arvid Lindblad behind him in 14th and on the inside row next to him another new team to Europe that is the Argenti Motorsport squad with Archie Walker the sole junior representative for that squad in there in position but there's such a wealth of talent all the way through this field as well you've only got to look to the likes of Ivan Arias and of course the man beside him Ruben Volt both very much establishing talents Miguel Perro who won the Winter Cup two years ago in the mini category there are so many incredible racing drivers out there but obviously we now need to clear the grid and let these guys battle for supremacy this is the show that we've all been waiting for and there's so many juniors who can win can you predict the winner i can't absolutely fantastic battle so far in the juniors we've had a lot of competitors who have been very evenly matched but now they go to battle one last time to decide who is going to be the next man in the junior category to win. Only two title winners in the past, Marty Boyer in 2017 and 18, Oliver Behrman last year. We're guaranteed a new title winner in 2020, but who's it going to be? Well, for those of you who are listening along still on Downforce Radio, it is going to be an absolutely extraordinary battle. One minute to go has been called. So all of the competitors are now in position. The mechanics have left them in their particular lineups on the grid. But this is where the battle really starts. Dan Ginchard and Bart Harrison from the front row of the grid are about to go into a world of excitement and great success is gonna come upon them now. This is gonna be exceptional motorsport. Hang on to your hats, you're gonna to need to. 17 laps around the Valencia circuit and unpredictability is definitely going to be the buzzword. Dan Ginchard, Bart Harrison, Aaron Walker, Freddie Spindlow, Alfie Rigby, Marcus Lizio, Yvonne David, Edward Pearson, Freddie Stater and Ollie Pilker in the top 10. And any one of those guys could get the job done. They all have different stories, different histories, different origins to bring into this fantastic title. But I tell you what, this is going to be such an unpredictable battle. No one really knows who's going to have the upper hand by the time they get through the formation laps, but that is now upon us. Time to go racing for the last time in junior. Daniel Ginshard and Bart Harrison on the front row of the grid from Aaron Walker and Freddie Spindlow, Alfie Rigby and Marcus Lizio, Yvonne David of Sri Lanka and Edward Pearson, his teammate, Freddie Slater and Ollie Pilker in the top 10, then Bruno Del Pino and Brandon Carr, Archie Walker and Arvid Lindblad from Ivan Arias and Ruben Volt. Miguel Pedro de Zoraga and Sergio Ruiz from Juan Cota and Mikai Singh, Nathan Ottink and Brandon Templeton, then Guillermo de Algaro and Clarissa Dervich 
from Benjamin Hovelak and Carlotto Lee, Adria Mustienes and Paul Cayos, Jack Cox and Elia Papachena, from Federico Scavini, Charlie Webb, Jorge Martinez, Roman Angelo, Harvey Riley, and Santiago Valle. There's going to be quite an incredible fight back in this race. Muchas gracias to the uh, incredible marshals around the circuit as well. They've been absolutely amazing all weekend long. We couldn't go racing without the Orange Army. And they've been absolutely fantastic all weekend long. They've kept us safe and sound and out of harm's way all the way through the meeting. And it looks as though we're going to have a flying finish thanks to the juniors and seniors as they warm up their tyres and brakes trying to get heat and temperature to the absolute optimum. But for Dan Ginshard and Bart Harrison, this is going to be the toughest race of their careers. Neither of them have ever been on the front row of the grid for a final in Europe. Certainly not at this level. So this is going to be quite a tough battle for them all. But so many times we've seen drivers thrust into the limelight and expected to sink or swim. And they will do an absolutely exceptional job as they already have done over the course of the weekend. But now it's time to go for glory. They come out of the technical sweeping hairpins and Dan Ginshard and Bart Harrison elect to slow the field heading onto the back straight. They don't want a false start. So Ginshard and Harrison, Walker and Spindlow, Rigby and Lucio, David and Pearson, Slater and Pilker, Delpino and Carr, Archie Walker and Lindblad, then Arias, Volt, Pero, Ruiz, Cota, Singh, Ottink, Templeton, Delgado, Dervich, Hoberlach and Lee from Mustienis, Caios, Cox, Papachena, Scavini, Webb, Martinez, Andriolo, Ridey and Valve. Ginshard on the inside, Harrison on the outside. Get ready, grab your hats and hang on to your horses. This is going to be a absolute cracker. Here we go, great start. I oh, know it's not, my apologies, a false start. A false start is called. So they call a false start immediately. And that means then that obviously we're going to go around again, an extra formation lap. It was a last minute decision, I think. That was a split second decision there from the clock of the course, Martin B. So now they will go around again. And that just adds to the tension. They didn't want a false start. They didn't want an extra formation lap, the leaders. But that's what they got. It just adds to the drama and tension. The winner of this race, just as it does in the mini for Young Baral, wins not only a ticket to the Ayami International Finals in October, but also a free pass for the Ayami Euro Series 2020 to Marienborg, to Castelletto, to SA, and back here in Valencia in August. What a tough battle awaits the drivers. Onto the back straight, and Dan Ginshot on the inside for Chaos Sport, Bart Harrison for Mick Barrett Racing on the outside line. Then it's Aaron Walker and Freddie Spindlow, Alfie Rigby and Marcus Luzio from Yvonne, David and Edward Pearson, Freddie Slater and Oli Pilker. The leading Spaniard in the field is Bruno Del Pino, and he is there in 11th position. There's plenty of talent behind him that could charge their way through as well. But this is where the story concludes. Ginshard, Harrison, Walker, Spindlow, Rigby, Luzio, David, Pearson, Slater and Pilker. They come out of the final turn. This time they'll want a perfect getaway. We're racing in Valencia. That's more like it. Down to the first corner. Aaron Walker's going to tuck in. Tries to go for the move. In behind Dan Ginshard. Rigby gets the move and gets in the second position. Alfie Rigby gets himself into the place. And there's two of them off in the mid-pack. As an absolutely heroic start from Yvonne David. Puts the Sri Lankan into fourth position behind Walker. What a start for your man David. And Rigby makes the move on Ginshard on the first lap. Rigby gets into the lead on Dan Ginshard. Third position for Aaron Walker and his teammate, your man David, is right there. That's one of the fusions around the outside. That's never Freddie Slater. It is absolutely brilliant. Into fifth position already. So around the outside and they are battling away onto the back straight. Rigby leads, Ginshard second. Then it's Walker and up to fourth comes Freddie Slater past your man David. The Fusion Motorsport sensation just does not want to hang around. So Rigby, Ginshard, Walker and Slater, the top four cross the line together with Yvette and David in a brilliant fit in front of Bart Harrison and Archie Walker as Slater gets into third past Aaron Walker. Slater now into the third position spot. Oh my word, they're really trying to upstage the minis already. So Rigby leads Ginshard, his teammate. Then it's Slater in third. Walker is fourth from Yvonne, David and Bart Harrison. Archie Walker, Ed Pearson, Bruno Del Pino and Arvid Lindblad charging through. From Oli Pilker and Brandon Carr. 
Down the short stretch to the hairpin. And Ginshard's already trying to size up his teammate Alfie Rigby. He's not going to make the overtaking move just yet. But 7 versus 154 is going to be a very exciting battle. Down the short stretch. And Dan Ginshard wants to make this work. Out of the double right kink. He's now going to stretch away with Rigby. He wants to play the long game. Ginshard knows that those two cards have got a lot of speed. If he can start to stretch away with Rigby, then he can spend the last two laps thinking about the victory as Archie Walker makes the move further back. He's going to get up the inside of Yvonne David. And Argenti Motorsport are now firmly in the top six in their first ever European final race. Excellent work. Ed Pearson's now got onto the back of Yvonne David. So David and Pearson are together. Pilker's come up to ninth past Lindblad and Elbino. So there's still plenty of racecraft to come from this one, but it's definitely started in the best possible manner as Alfie Rigby and Dan Ginshard continue to stretch an advantage over Freddie Slater. They're certainly trying to. Actually, it looks as though Ginshard's trying to stretch them away and Rigby is actually trying to hold them at bay at the moment. So Rigby is actually trying to hold up his teammate and back him into Slater. No team orders in this field. And certainly from Ginshard's point of view, he wants to get Rigby to get on with it. Let's push away. But he knows, Rigby, that his fiercest rival in this race could well be his own teammate. So Dan Ginshard still trying to edge Rigby further away from the field. Slater is there in third. Then it's Aaron Walker from Bart Harrison and Archie Walker, who's in sixth place now. Yvonne David and Ed Pearson. Ollie Pilker and Arvin Lindblad in the top ten. Bart Harrison gets the fastest lap in on lap three. We're on the fourth tour now. Rigby in front of Ginshard. Slater. Aaron Walker, Bart Harrison, and Archie Walker in sixth for Argenti. Yvan David and Ed Pearson, the two strawberries, are in seventh and eighth. Pilker is ninth. Lindbad is tenth from Del Pino, Ferro, Volt, Spindler, way down in 14th after a terrible start. And then it's Santiago Valde up from 50, uh, from the back of the grid, sorry, to 15th. Meanwhile, in the background, you can see that Ed Pearson has got past Yvan David for seventh. And Hovelak and Dervich have both got past Brandon Carr. To move further up into the tight team. Is that Harrison through to fourth? Yes, it is. Harrison gets the move on Alan Walker. The two Tony Carts go to battle. But it's Mick Barrett Racing now in front of Strawberry Racing. As Bart Harrison puts himself into a very competitive P4. There's still a very good chance of a podium finish for the 77. Bart Harrison running well in fourth position as he tries to close down on Rigby and Ginshard, who are being caught by Freddie Slater. What a battle this is going to be. Freddie Slater wants to become the first driver in a Army Winter Cup history to win back-to-back -back titles in two consecutive years in two different classes. It's never happened before. But Slater is there in third behind Rigby and Ginshard. Down the back straight. And this is going to be an absolute barnstormer when this race gets going. It's already pretty epic. Ginshard tucked up behind Rigby. But he knows that the best chance he's going to have of a clean run to the victory is to stretch away a lead with Rigby and to keep Freddie Slater firmly off the back. But Slater is using the slipstream. He seems to have taken to the junior X30 class like a duck to water, like he does most of his ambitions in karting. Oh, a big hop over the curves from Alfie Rigby. Ginshard nearly found a place to go through and he needs to do it quickly because Freddie Slater is the fastest man on track now. Third position, and he gets the fastest lap of 57.541. So Ginshard's still hustling Alfie Rigby, his teammate. They're still trying this tactic, at least Ginshard certainly is, of trying to stretch away with Rigby up front and pull away from Freddie Slater. Can it work, though? Is Rigby going to be compliant, considering they were bitter rivals two years ago in the British scene? Rigby looks back. He sees that Ginshard is there and knows that Slater is coming. But that's a massive invitation to his teammate to have a go. Onto the main straight. Six laps completed, 11 to go. It's a long old final in junior, and it is the toughest race they've ever had. An absolutely brilliant battle. Here they come again. Rigby, Ginshard, Slater in third. Fourth position for Harrison. Fifth position for the 20 of Aaron Walker. Ginshard gets the puck and gets the lead. Ginshard takes the lead in the junior final. He's been waiting for his moment, and on lap seven, he feels that this is the time to go for it. So Ginshard now leads the way from Alfie Rigby in second place. Teammates, but implacable rivals. Ginshard, Rigby, Slater, 
Fourth is Harrison. Fifth is Aaron Walker from Pearson, David and Archie Walker. But Dan Ginchard has struck gold on the seventh lap and now leads with ten and a bit to go. Rigby still trying to stretch away with Ginchard. And now it's his turn to do the chasing in front of Ginchard. Oh, and a, big of a, a little bit of a moment there from Rigby. Caught the curb. So he drops about a cart length back. But he can still easily win the race from there. It's easier to chase than it is to be chased by another driver. Into the chicane. Ginchard, Rigby, Slater, Harrison fourth, Walker in fifth. That's Alan Walker in front of Ed Pearson and Yvonne David with Archie Walker in eighth from Oli Pilka and Arvid Lindblad. Oli Pilka sets the fastest lap at 57.4. Brilliant racing. It always is in Junior X30. And now Freddie Slater thinks he's got a chance on Alfie Rigby. And if he does it before Rigby's even expecting it, then that could definitely break up the flow of this race and give the Fusion Motorsport driver a great chance to go for victory. Rigby still hanging on a second place. He knows that Slater is right behind him. So this is going to be the chance he's been waiting for. He needs to get through quickly. If he's going to make the move on Ginchard. But he can't just yet. The 154. Dan Ginchard leads the number seven. Here goes Rigby. Going for the lead. He wants to back him into Freddie Slater. So that Slater passes for second. But Ginchard is very sensible and wise to the manoeuvre. He lets Rigby go. Stops back into second. And now he's going to have another try again later. Great racing through this field. Rigby back in front. Ginchard second. Slater third. Aaron Walker is back past Bart Harrison for fourth position now. As Ed Pearson runs sixth in front of Yvonne David and Ollie Pilker. With Arvid Lindblad now in front of Archie Walker for ninth and tenth. And Ginchard in second has got Alfie Slater all over the back of him. But he's got his hard charging teammate Alfie Rigby in front. I wonder how many nails the... KR Sport and Fusion Motorsport teams have got left on the end of their fingers because this is proper exciting and serious stuff. Here comes Ginchard, looking for the dive on the inside of Rigby. Rigby's not going to give him enough space. And certainly Freddie Slater's not going to be easy to back down. But Rigby hangs on a second. Ginchard retakes the lead. Rigby tries again up the inside. And this time Slater might get through as well. Ginchard has to resist. He has to let Slater go through. And Alan Walker's now going to have a try. So Rigby leads, Slater second, Slater going for first immediately, Ginchard hesitates, and Walker's going to get through on the inside for third. So now three different teams in the top three, Rigby for KR Sport, Slater for Fusion Motorsport, Walker for Strawberry Racing, Ginchard is fourth and Harrison is fifth. Four different teams in the top five, and here comes Walker having a crack at Freddie Slater into second place. So Slater has to yield for the moment down to third. Ginchard is still there for fourth. But Rigby, Walker, Slater, Ginchard, Harrison is your top five. And it is a top five now. And Walker's going to go for the lead on Rigby. Slater gets through as well. Rigby shuts the door in time for Ginchard. But Slater's now going to have a look to push for the number 20 of Aaron Walker. And Aaron Walker slots in to the lead of the race in front of Freddie Slater. Rigby's third, Ginchard's fourth and Harrison's fifth. Any one of the five could win. And waiting in the rings for sixth and seventh. Closing in is Ed Pearson and Yvonne David. What if one of those two could pick up the victory after all of this? Six and a half laps to go. What a battle. On to the back stretch. They come up to the hairpin. Slater closing down Aaron Walker. Rigby and Ginchard still there in third and fourth. Trying to fend off from Harrison, Pearson and Yvonne David. Oli Pilker now joins the train. He's in eighth position. Six and a half to go. Down the back straight. Slater in the draft of Aaron Walker. Rigby trying to break the toe of Ginchard and Harrison. But Harrison's going to assist Ginchard in his bid to go for third position. He's not close enough to go for the move yet. So with six laps to go, it's a freight train. Walker, Slater, Rigby, Ginchard. And here goes Slater on the inside. Freddie Slater hits the front in his first ever junior final. And Rigby gets it a second. So Freddie Slater leads in his first junior final. And here comes Rigby for another go. Slater will not give him the space to go for it. Walker nearly comes a cropper as a result. And Ginchard slots in the fourth. He doesn't go for the move yet. And now closing up with the top eight is the man in ninth place. That is Arvid Lindblad. He's going to join the queue. Anyone could win this race now. Watch for Ginchard. Round the outside of Aaron Walker. 
He almost made it stick, but he manages to shut down Harrison. Up the inside now comes Ed Pearson. Ed Pearson going to try and get into fifth, but Harrison defends around the outside. Meanwhile, Ali Pilker has got past Yvonne David. State is defending with five and a half to go. This is an absolute rout now. Slater hangs on to it on the inside line. Rigby still second from Walker and Ginshard, and it's absolutely a freight train down in the first corner. This is going to be such a tough race to win now. The train is just going to get longer and longer. As Slater leads Rigby, Walker, Ginshard, Harrison, Pearson, Pilka, Lindblad, David, and now in 10th place is Bruno Del Pino. And he's caught up to the back of the queue. The Spaniard is now in the mix. This race just keeps getting better. Archie Walker's joined the freight train. He's in 11th. And then Spindlow, Volt and Valve are not far away. Yet again, more defense from Slater. Watch for Ginchar. Round the outside of Owen Walker. He's not going to make it this time. Remains fourth. Keeps the door firmly shut for Harrison. Pilk is going to get up the inside of Pearson. And he leaves the door wide open for Lindblad too. Brilliant bit of racecraft. Up to the corner once again in the chicane. And still, Freddie Slater holds this inside line with Gusto. He wants to defend it. Ribby comes up wide. Walker's going to go to the left side. That's going to hold them up. Oh, I've done a bit of a strike of the cone there for your own David on the way down the straight. But there goes Ribby. Ribby makes his bid on Slater and gets into the lead. Four to go. Ribby Slater's going to go. And oh, they leave each other. They leave each other. Ginshard remains in second just, but Ribby's down the order. Slater is leading. Slater retakes the lead, and Ginshaw second. Up to third comes Owen Walker, but Harrison is fourth, and Alfie Rigby rejoins down in about 12th. Oh, it got too close for comfort, and now watch Ginshaw as he tries to sweep round the outside of Slater. Slater holds him at the apex, he drops to third. Owen Walker round the outside of Slater, he takes the lead now. Superb as Walker hits the front, and Harrison second from Slater. Lindblad is now fourth in front of Pilker and Ginshard sixth in front of Spinlow. Oh my word! This race has turned on its head as we knew it would. Arvid oh, Lindblad still pushing on. He's got Pilker trying to come through with Ginshard's support. Pilker still trying to be there on the inside. Ginshard splits up the middle. Spinlow round the outside. Lindblad works with Pilker and Spindlow boxing in teammate Ginshard Ginshard now gets the move on the inside of Spindlow Spindlow has to go across the grass of the chicane rejoins behind his teammate and that unfortunately is the very talented Nikai Singh Nikai Singh is off the road what a shame and so too is Lucio Lucio is off as well Lucio out of the race that is such a shame Marcus Lucio was fighting back beautifully but it's all come wrong for him. So Aaron Walker now leads with two and a half laps to go on the back straight. Harrison is second, third is Slater. Fourth, incredibly, is Arvid Lindblad. What a fight back. And now we've got Walker versus Harrison, the two Tony Carts battling away for the victory. Slater is third. And it's defensive mode for Aaron Walker. Two laps to go. The prize for this victory is so massive. It's an IAMI International Finals ticket and the IAMI Euro Series free pass. They all want it so badly. They'll almost do anything they can to get there. A tank stabber from Pilker and Lindblad as they battle away. Ginshot's going to get up the inside of two men to get into fifth position behind Pilker. Spindler's going to try and get past Ginshot and there's a little rub from them. Oh my word, this battle just in the top six. Ginshot goes off. Ginshot goes wide in the back straight. And that's dropped him a long way down the field. From pole position, he had a great shot. And it looks as though we've got Miguel Perro off. Miguel Perro has got off. So Miguel Perro was trying to get into the fray, so he's got off the road now as well. But the leaders are very close. Walker defending like crazy to Bart Harrison. And here comes Freddie Slater for another try. One lap to go. They're defending to the inside. Slater's hanging it on the outside. Walker knows he's there. Harrison might not. Through the first hairpin. And one lap to go. Alan Walker, Bart Harrison and Freddie Slater. Just one last lap. Here goes Slater on the inside of Harrison. Second place is his. It's just one away now. But Alan Walker is going to try and hold on to it. He was the dominant fastest driver on Friday. Fastest in practice one. Fastest in practice two. Fastest in qualifying. Can he get there? Freddie Slater is doing his best. Walker's being a little too cautious for me. 
Slate has got a great run now. Walker holds the inside line. Slate has got a good run in the apex. Down the back straight. Slater is being boxed. But if Walker's got a chance, Harrison can edge in closer. Walker's going to give it everything he's got. Slater on the inside. They drift wide. Harrison's going to get it. But Harrison wins. What a victory. Bart Harrison. Do the Bart man around Valencia. Because Bart Harrison has stolen it from them all. What a victory for Bart Harrison. He and Freddie Slater try the fist bump, but Slater goes onto the grass. Oh, Bart Harrison has stolen it all. Absolutely majestic. Such wisdom for Bart Harrison. He was the underdog coming into this weekend. He's quietly got on with the job with Mick Barrett Racing. What a race. Bart Harrison wins. Freddie Slater second from Aaron Walker and Ollie Pilker. Arnie Lindad in fifth from Archie Walker. Great fight back from him. Santiago Valve in seventh from the back. Pearson is eighth from Rigby. Volt, Ivan Arias and Dan Ginshard. Yvan David 13th from Spinlo and Hobelak. Sergio Ruiz and Clarissa Dervic. Canato Lee and Nathan Ottink. Brandon Carr and Juan Cota. Jack Cox, Bruno Del Pino and Guillermo Delgado. In 25th place behind them, it is Charlie Webb. Then Brandon Templeton, Bob Chaos, Jorge Martinez and Roman Angelo. Harvey Ryby, Elia Papacina and Adrian Mustienes. Four retirements in the end. Miguel Pedro, Marcus Lucio, Federico Scalvini and Mikai Singh. But what a victory and what a race. Bart Harrison, you couldn't find a nicer gent in the paddock to grab the victory. He's worked so hard all winter. And Bart Harrison is a very, very popular winner here. Absolutely terrific. Brilliant job. Brilliant race. What a champ. Well... We thought it was already exciting, and it certainly is, but now we get a real battle royale. This is the race that most of you have been waiting for. Senior X30, the race to end them all. We have two title winners now. What is gonna happen to give us the third? It's gonna be nail biting to the last.
Hi, I'm Tom Ingram, and you're listening to Downforce Radio. Hi, I'm Jacques Villeneuve, you're listening to Downforce Radio. Hi, I'm Bruno Senna, you're listening to Downforce Radio. Hi, I'm Chris Hoy, and you're listening to Downforce Radio. Hi, I'm Landon Norris, and you're listening to Downforce Radio. There is no terrible way to win. There is only winning. Let me drive. I will make a fool out of you. Every one of us has to find a reason to do this. You do it because you're driven. I was beginning to think I'd never be anything more than a piston-happy, lead-foot punk. Then this starts to happen. Somebody put it in your mind you got to be perfect every time out or you're a failure. Well, forget that. Just forget it. You ready to put away your toys and grow up? Are you ready to make more money in one year than your father made in his whole life? Are you ready to become a real race car driver? When I won, it was probably the last time I ever felt pure victory. Because I'm quicker than all of you. And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. You know, isn't that what we're in this for? To stare death in the face and, and to cheat it? Come on, there's nobility in that. It's, it's like being knights. No pressure. Nobody breathing down my back, just driving because I love the pure. A lot of people go through life doing things bad. Racing is important to me to do it well. When you're racing, it's life. Anything that happens before or after, it's just waiting. I just hope. Well. Then I'm <laughs> racing. And that's uh, a very heavily loaded well. Fine. We've had two absolutely race. spectacular race. races in the finals for both Mini and Junior. And now we have another spectacular race in front of us for the senior battle. And this one has unpredictability written all over it again, as our drivers head their way to the grid for what promises to be the most thrilling 20 laps you could ever predict. There are so many battles to be had in this field, and not all of them are in the top 10. There are some absolutely exceptional racers to talk to. So let's start from the very front of the grid, because obviously the man who has fought his way to get here has made it look easy at times, but it certainly isn't. It's Oliver Behrman, 14 years of age, one of the youngest men in the field. You came here last year as a winner in the junior category by the end of it. You could do it again here in the seniors. Just what kind of pressure are you feeling at the moment? Well, I'm feeling a lot of pressure from the other guys, but I'm also confident from our previous performances. So hopefully we can get the win. Now, obviously the battle is obviously going to be between this guy right next to you on the left-hand side. You've raced him twice now. He's beat you once, you beat him once. So now it's fair game. How can you fare over the next 20 laps? Well, I'm really confident with our new tyre pace. Showed in quality and testing. And we're on the tyre now, obviously, so hopefully. Well, we good. good luck. I know that the whole of Essex is riding on you and wanting you to get a good job. Have a great race. Cheers. So for Oliver Behrman, it's obviously going to be a race full of stress and adrenaline. And most of it, certainly quite a fair view, bit of it, is going to come from this man, Callum Bradshaw. Callum? You've got a camera there. We want to make sure that everybody can see you when you talk to us. So far, so good. There's been some very tough races, but now the two of you have raced together twice and you each have a win each. So I guess now it's about trying to maximise the start, which you've been very good at from second place. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's 1-1 really against Oli. Uh, I beat him first. He beat me in that pre-final. I had a little issue, which uh, compromised me a little bit, but um, I'm pretty sure this final is going to be pretty exciting, that's for sure. Now the thing is, it's been about you two so far, but now we've got some interesting dynamics because he's going to have Philip Varva just behind him to help him, and you've got two or three strawberries now starting to queue up. So Kimber and McDonald have come into this one right at the last, as they always do. There's so many things to think about in this one. Yeah, uh, it's just another factor, really. <laughs> you just got to get on with it and deal with the best as possible, really. Well, you were the runner-up in the Euro Series last year. We're great to see you get the Winter Cup. Go for it. Yes, for sure. <laughs> so Callum Bradshaw and Oliver Behrman know the task in front of them. It will be very tough. From the third position on the grid, though, the local man and certainly leading the charge for Spain is Philip Varva. Let's see if we can get you on the camera, obviously, because we want to make sure everybody can see you, Philip. This is going to be a tough race. There's no two ways about it. But you were fifth in last year's Euro Series. You know this circuit very well. Your teammate is there in front of you. You, do, you guys have a great opportunity to push away and get to the front. But how tough is it going to be? Well, I agree it's going to be very tough. Like We've got a very, very good competition, very quick competition. So, obviously, a bit of luck is needed, but, you know, we've got the speed, so we're going to hope to get away and try to win this event. Now, last year was a very difficult one for you, but so far this weekend, you've been one of the best weekends I've ever seen from you. You must be having so much confidence at the moment from that. What can you take into the final now? Yeah, well, obviously, um, I gained a lot of confidence after winning the, my last heat yesterday. So, and after finishing third now in the pre-final, so I'm definitely going to carry on using that confidence I have right now and try to, well, finish on the podium right now, get my first podium in Europe. It'd be great to see you get the job done. Good luck, my friend. Thank you.
So Philip Varva from third position. We've got two guys over here to uh, have a word with, but I think Martin B might beat me to it, actually, because we've got uh, two strawberry racing guys. Let's talk to the two-time Euro Series title winner, Mark Kimber. You have a habit of doing this now, because all the way through the weekend, you've been scratching at the surface of the top 10, not quite at the front. Now we're in fifth, grid, fifth on the grid for the final. How do you do it every time? How do you just come back in at the last minute? Yeah, I think we found a little bit of speed over the weekend and uh, definitely a bit more in the pre-final then. So I think with the new tyres, we should have the speed to win the race. And this is obviously going to be very difficult, but at least now you've got some firepower. With Dean there, you've got both Guy and Kean Shields not far away either, so you could steal this from out from underneath the guys up front. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a difficult race, but I think we should, we'll be able to work together, hopefully reach the front and then settle it in the last few laps. I'm really excited about this one, mate. Good luck. Give us a good show. Thank you. Well, speaking to one, we'll uh, speak to the other just before he dons his helmet. I do apologise, Dean. You won this title last year. This year has been 10 times tougher than last year's was because the level of the field has accelerated. You've obviously had your young apprentice, Kid Shields, to battle with now, which is a new dynamic as well. And these guys up front have been quick. What can you get now from fourth place on the grid? Um, I don't know. I don't think anyone can predict this race. Um, I think it's just going to be a... A bit of a race from the world goal really i don't think anyone's going to get away or um yeah so i don't know what's going to bring i don't know what to expect or yeah i really don't know it's a bit of a mystery this one if any of your sports car colleagues ask you now why do you keep coming back to this event you can just show them this and this is why isn't it yeah why wouldn't you come back <laughs> good job buddy cheers mate from fourth on the grid that's going to be such an interesting uh, dynamic Alejandro Lajos they're in sixth position on the grid though he's not out of this yet don't forget he's mighty quick in a straight line and around here he's got a great opportunity especially with his teammate Dan Nogales there to assist if these two manage to get to work together then they could steal it out from under the guys in front as well in seventh position let's have a quick word with the home hero Ruben Moya mate this is your stomping ground this has been your strongest weekend so far in the Ayama Euro paddock you're seventh on the grid. You've won races this weekend. This is your best opportunity to go for it, isn't it? It's going to be, I think, difficult. The guys in front are so fast, but we are going to try everything to win. Let's hope we can. And this is one of those races where it's a long one, 20 laps. You've got to stay hungry throughout. You guys have finally got the setup you deserve from this package. Are we going to see you on the podium? I don't know. I, uh, as I told you before, it's very difficult. The guys in front are so fast, but... We are going to try everything. We, are, we were waiting for this moment for many years, so we are going to try it. Whatever ha happens in this race, you have done yourself and your home fans proud. Good luck. Enjoy it. Cheers. So this is going to be a really exciting one for Ruben Moyer. He's got a great race ahead of him. The two Strawberry Twins are now next to each other on the fifth row of the grid. Now, this is a proper story here. Guy Cunnington, his first ever X30 weekend, straight in at senior and straight into the top 10 in the final. That's pretty impressive in anybody's book. And next to him, of course, the Flying Scotsman, Kean Shields. They have been working so hard through the weekend. A couple of heat wins over the weekend as well. Kean is right in the mix. He's got a great chance. Now we are about to go racing for the last time this weekend. Who's going to be our last Ayami Winter Cup title winner? Let's find out. So 20 laps and 30 seconds to go before the drivers are sent around in formation. This is going to be the toughest 20 laps of their season. Quite possibly even more so than the races still to come. You'll watch the grid as they go around on the feed. I'll get into my commentary position and racing can begin. So as the competitors make their way round, those of you who are listening via Downforce Radio, what a tension-filled race this is going to be. An absolutely amazing thrill fest to the end of the weekend. And the winner of this race, of course, walks away with two amazing prizes. An Ayami International Final ticket, but also an Ayami Euro Series pass. What a fill it for all of the drivers involved, and what a battle it's going to be. 20 laps of this incredible circuit. Oliver Behrman in pole position from Callum Bradshaw. Philip Varda and Dean McDonald on the second row from Mark Kimber and Alejandro Lajos. Ruben Moya and Dan Nogales from Guy Cunnington and Keane Shields. Tyler Reed and Guillermo de Oliveira. Joshua Raul and Xavier Hansen from Marley Boyer and Josef Vea. Maci Chichko and Morgan Porter. Then Ivan Bataya and Matilda Olsen. Sean Butcher and Emil Karjelainen. Lewis Gilbert and Rivaldo van der Westerlaken from Erbaut Moore and Teddy Williams, Maximus Meyer and Jaime Sands, Zach Ripley and Alessandro Serenetti, Alicia Barrett 
Ariandro Schimpf, Eduardo Cossetain, Conor Jupp, Sam Alota and Harry Platten. 20 laps of this fantastic international Cotodromo Lucas Guerrero just a few miles away from the circuit Ricardo Tormo scene of the MotoGP season finale for so many years and of course a few miles away from the location of the marina circuit that saw the European Grand Prix from 2008 through to 2012. It's an amazing area of the world this motorsport country in southern Spain but now we are ready for the biggest show in town. Oliver Behrman could become a novice senior title winner. However, last year's title winner, Dean McDonald, is now up to fourth. The two-time Euro Series title winner in the last two years, Mark Kimber, is up to fifth. Callum Bradshaw, the vice title winner last year, is in second on the grid. Philip Varva, the leading Spaniard, is in third. Lajos, Moya, Nogales, Cunnington and Kean Shields all in the top 10. Several drivers below the top 10 with a chance to make it work. Let's see what happens over the next 20 laps in the sizzling Spanish sunshine. Behrman on the inside, Bradshaw on the outside. Get ready. That seat you're sitting on, you're only going to need the edge of it from now on. Here we go. Let's race in Valencia. And what a start from Bradshaw. He chops across on Behrman and through with him goes McDonald. So Bradshaw and McDonald straight into first and second. Behrman down to third. And as the field sweeps through the heavy for the first time, that's a cracking start too from one of the current Republic Spains. I think that is the 238 of La Horse. So they come through and there's already an incident. Two or three cards have come off there. That is Alicia Barrett. Also up there at the 247, I think, winning. That's Connor Jupp. So Jupp and Barrett involved, and also one of the Cart Republics at the back end of the field in tow. That is the 235 in trouble. I'm very sure that's Aliandro Schimpf. It is indeed. But Dean McDonald has now hit the front. Dean McDonald has gone into the lead past Bradshaw and Behrman. What an amazing start from Dean McDonald. He won the title last year, and for the first time all weekend, he is now in the lead. Here comes Bradshaw, though. Straight up the inside. Behrman is back in there as well. So Bradshaw and Behrman, one and two. Here comes Lahoz. Trying to get through in a third position on McDonald, and he's done it. So the horse in the third place, McDonald just went for broke on the first lap and went solid. I'm going to go for the win. Absolutely brilliant. So Bradshaw, Behrman, Lahoz and McDonald, then Kimber, Vava, Tyler Reed is up in seventh place. What a start from the Argenti driver. And then in eighth place it is Josh Rowledge in front of Dan Nogales and Ruben Moyer. Then Cunnington, Shields, Boyer, Butcher, De Oliveira, Hansen. Shichko, and there goes Behrman into the lead, but he drifts wide. Lahoz gets back through, and so too does McDonald. Behrman runs wide in the fourth. Oh my word, this is going to have so many twists and turns, this race. So Bradshaw retakes the lead, loses it for about a metre. And Bradshaw leads Lahoz. Lahoz in second, here comes McDonald up the inside. And McDonald gets back in a second. So McDonald's second behind Bradshaw, then Lahoz, then it's Behrman. Kimber, Tyler Reed, here comes Rowledge, trying to take on Mark Kimber. You've got to be brave to go against him, and he has. Rowledge goes through. Rowledge goes through, as does Dan Nogales. Joshua Rowledge rolls up his sleeves, and just like his younger teammate in the juniors, Bart Harrison, Josh Rowledge has got some firepower. Lap three. Bradshaw from McDonald and Nogales. Uh, sorry, Bradshaw, McDonald and Lahoz, I should say. Nogales is up to seventh, though, past Mark Kimber. But it's Bradshaw leading. McDonald second. Lahoz third. From Behrman, Tyler Reed is in fifth. Well, they did say coming into the weekend, didn't they, Argenti, that they want to win. They've left it to the last minute, but Tyler Reed is now in P5 for Argenti. And here comes McDonald on Bradshaw. McDonald's going to go for it on the inside line. And McDonald retakes the lead from Bradshaw. Here comes Lahoz. He's going to get alongside Bradshaw now as well. In a second over the line. But is it enough to hold second in the turn one? Yes, it is. Behrman's now back on them. What a battle now. Strawberry Racings, Dean McDonald, Cart Republic Spains, Alejandro Lahoz, Callum Bradshaw for Fusion, and Oliver Behrman for KR. There goes Bradshaw in a second. Behrman gets the fastest lap. And we are definitely game on now for a brilliant final. Tyler Reed is fifth and Josh Rowledge is in a brilliant sixth. What a race from those two. Complete underdogs outside the top ten, both of them. And there goes Behrman. Behrman into third. Good run from Oliver Behrman. Into third place past Lahoz. 
So now he's got the two toughest men in the field to beat. Dean McDonald, the reigning Ayami Winter Cup title winner and the runner-up in last year's Ayami Euro Series. Here comes Behrman up the inside of Bradshaw. Take that into second place. And now they've got to try and go after the leader, Dean McDonald. This is going to be tough stuff. But Bradshaw's going to play the long game in behind Behrman. They're going to get after Dean McDonald first before they think about another race move. So Behrman in second, leading the charge. After Dean McDonald in the lead of the race. There he is. How does he do it? Dean McDonald so much waft in this event. But the big thing is he's left it to the last minute. What a dive from Tyler Reed in the fourth place as Lewis Gilbert gets the fastest up of the race further back in the pack. Absolutely terrific stuff so far. And it's now McDonald, Behrman, Bradshaw and Tyler Reed. Welcome back to the front, Tyler Reed. Absolutely brilliant from him. And the Argenti Motorsport man might genuinely go all the way to the top here. Absolutely brilliant. A team that's so new, they haven't quite got their race suits ready yet. But Argenti Motorsport coming straight in with their new man, Tyler Reed, and already up at the top five in the final of their first ever encounter in Europe. Sixth place now is Nogales. If he can get onto the toe of Lahore, the two Spaniards could work their way further forward. But McDonald is being caught by Behrman and Bradshaw. They are getting the job done. Tyler Reed hops over the curves to get away from Lahore. But he's okay because two wheels were on the road. Very tough racing so far. Photographers racing around trying to get the best possible shots. They're going to miss everything at this rate. Absolutely terrific. So much going on. Behrman all over the back of Dean McDonald. Bradshaw still there. Tyler Reed is full from La Hoz, Nogales, Rowledge, Kimber, Vatava, Butcher, Moya, Boyer, Shields and Olsen. Down the back straight. And Dean McDonald's got Behrman right underneath him. He's done the hard work and caught him up. Here goes Behrman. He's going to go to the inside line of Dean McDonald. You've just taken the lead of the reigning title winner. Nicely done from Behrman. And now here comes Bradshaw back for more. He's going to work with McDonald to close up on the young 14-year-old. But Oliver Behrman still leads it. Second is McDonald, third is Bradshaw. The three giants of this field. Tyler Reed in fourth. Best of the rest of the moment. Bradshaw goes to the inside of McDonald and he makes it stick. That was a tough fight. That was a very hard maneuver. But Bradshaw commits to it and gets through. But look at that, Behrman, daylight between them now. He's now got to rely on Dean McDonald as Bradshaw. Otherwise, Behrman could just drop the hammer and disappear up front. And that is not in the script. Tyler Reed still working hard. Aliandro Mahoz and Daniel Nogales in the top six. Kimber, Rowledge, Vava, Butcher, Moyer and Boyer from Keen Shields and Matilda Olsen. Guillermo de Oliveira. And then it is uh, Morgan Porter, I think, in front of Machi Chichko. Guy Cunnington and Alessandro Serenetti, who again has fought through the field up into 11th place. There goes Nogales. Nogales gets into fifth place in front of his teammate Lahoz. And now the two car republics can work together to close up. But if you are Dean McDonald, you've got another slight problem developing. Hello, it's Tyler Reed. He's there in fourth position. Tyler Reed now starting to have a go at things. Very quiet, very mild mannered Tyler Reed. He's not the most flamboyant driver in the paddock, but he's definitely one of the most ruthlessly quick. And he's right in there behind the two men up front, Bradshaw and McDonald. And is there going to be a move or two from Reed in this one? You can bet your bottom dollar there will. Onto the back straight. Behrman has gone for broke. He's pulling away. Qualifying lap after qualifying lap for Behrman now to try and stretch away. Here comes McDonald on the inside of Bradshaw. Oh, just about. And Tyler Reed tried to get through as well, but he wasn't quite close enough. Now he's going to need to get the deadlock done. This could be the fight just for second place, the way Behrman's pulling away. Absolutely exceptional. He's just breaking clear. The gap is now nearly two seconds between Behrman and McDonald. He's just dropped the hammer. Cole Trickle style in Days of Thunder and got away from the pack. But there's a long way still to go. 12 laps in total. And Tyler Reed's got past Bradshaw. Tyler Reed into third. Are they going to get their first podium on their debut, Argenti Motorsport? Absolutely terrific. Tyler Reed is in there in third. Here comes Nogales. Nogales gets through on the inside of Bradshaw. And this is all starting to come apart at the seams for Callum Bradshaw. Down to fifth place now. Behind Behrman, McDonald, Reed, and Nogales. So Bradshaw's going to try again. 
And up the inside comes Kimber. Kimber gets back into it now past the horse. And next up is Josh Rowledge. So Tyler Reed is up to third, as we know. Nogales, Bradshaw, Kimber, and now Rowledge gets on the inside of the horse. He gets through. Ninth is Barber, and tenth is Sean Butcher. What a duel for third position. Tyler Reed hops over the curves as he runs in front of Dan Nogales and Callum Bradshaw. It could still be a British clean sweep the way things are going, but it looks like it could be three different teams in the top three places. What an absolutely incredible result this could be. Oliver Behrman is your leader. Dean McDonald is second and Tyler Reed is third. Then it is Dan Nogales from Callum Bradshaw and Mark Kimber. Then Josh Rowledge and Alejandro Lahoz. Philip Barber and Sean Butcher. Down the short stretch of the back straight into the flat out right kinks. And this could be a run from Nogales into third, is it? No. In fact, McDonald is dropping the hammer now on the third place battle. So Reed, Nogales, Bradshaw and Kimber are dropping back. 10 laps down, 10 to go. Can Behrman hold this one and a half second lead over Dean McDonald? Now Behrman just needs to look after tyres and brakes here. He can afford to lose a second or so, but not much more than that. He's just got to keep the pace. Oliver Behrman is just running rings around this Senior X30 field. We thought he was an impressive junior title winner last year, but this has all been about his climb to the seniors. And what a performance from the Chelmsford Charger. The young man from Essex is there leading. McDonald, though, still pushing on from Scotland. McDonald is still working very hard here as he runs in second place. Third place, Tyler Reid. What a drive from him over the course of the weekend. Never would have expected him to be in the top three just on the way things have played out, but he has fought for it. Dan Nogales is fourth now. Callum Bradshaw is fifth and Mark Kimber in sixth place. It's a new decade, it's a new era, and the dawn of a new order at the front end of the field as Tyler Reed chops across on Dan Nogales. Fifth position for Callum Bradshaw, then Mark Kimber, Lahoz, Rowledge, Barber, Butcher, Moyer, Matilda Olsen's got past Mari Boyer. And then it is Morgan Porter from Guillermo de Havana, Keen Shields, Javier Hansen, Maci Chichko, even Bataille and Guy Cunnington. What a battle, what a race this is turning into as Dean McDonald struggles to stay with Oliver Behrman and Tyler Reed is hanging on to the podium by a thread. There goes Nogales though, on the inside line for third. Tyler Reed gets him straight back again on the undercut and the door could be open for Bradshaw. Bradshaw tries to commit to it, but Nogales is not going to yield. So now Bradshaw's going to have another go. Nogales is going to try to commit for the position. Tyler Reed slides out. Oh my word, Tyler Reed power slides into the chicane, runs wide, now they're all going to swamp him. Nogales through the third, Bradshaw through the fourth, and that's Kimber in fifth. Oh, and Bradshaw's went wide! Bradshaw's off! Callum Bradshaw's dream is over! Callum Bradshaw is out of the Ayami Winter Cup! Oh, devastating! He rejoins off around the circuit. Oh, he's dealing with his front fairing! I saw that with my own eyes. Callum, Callum. Absolutely unbelievable. He put out with his left foot. Surely it can't be under question. Oh, they just get so tempted sometimes. But unfortunately, when the camera is close up, you can't really deny that that's happened. Callum Bradshaw is technically now leading because he's missed half the circuit. But Oliver Behrman is technically a leader. Then it is Dean McDonald and Dan Nogales from Tyler Reed and Alejandro on the horse. Philip Barber and Mark Kimber, Josh Rowledge and Ruben Moyer. Then Sean Butcher and Matilda Olsen. Morgan Porter and Guillermo de Oliveira. But out in front it is now, of course, Oliver Behrman who leads the race, technically speaking. Second place is McDonald. Third is Dan Nogales. There may still be a Spaniard on the podium yet. But an absolutely incredible battle still to come as we are on lap 14 out of 20. So Oliver Behrman leads the race, technically speaking, although it says on your timing screens that Callum Bradshaw does, but obviously having had the incident and missed off the circuit, he is technically out in front. But Callum Bradshaw is almost certainly going to make his way to the pit lane. Well, Callum Bradshaw continues on his way around. At least he did. I think he's now pulled in. So Bradshaw is out of it. What a shame. He retires from the race after knowing what is coming. 
So Oliver Behrman in the lead of the race then from Dean McDonald. Third is Dan Nogales, fourth is Tyler Reed, and fifth is Alejandro Lojas. Philip Barber sixth for Mark Kimber, Josh Rowledge is eighth, then Ruben Moyer and Sean Butcher. So it's now Connor Jupp out, Harry Platten out, and one of the big names, Callum Bradshaw, is out. So Oliver Behrman has got a decent advantage now over Dean McDonald. It's 2.2 seconds. And I can't see him losing this unless there is a mechanical gremlin of some kind. He just needs to regulate his pace. What a drive for Behrman. Great drive for McDonald though. Second place when he was looking completely out of it at one stage. Dan Nogales is there in third. From Tyler Reed and Alejandro Lajos. Then it's Vava and Kimba. And Kimba's got through. Kimba's got past Philip Vava. Josh Rowledge is going to motivate them down the main straight though. As they try to fight their way forward. 15 down and 5 to go. And it's going to be a tough fight for third here. Dan Nogales is being caught by Tyler Reed and uh, his own teammate, Alejandro Lahoz. So Lahoz is trying to get on terms with Tyler Reed. Tyler Reed is trying to get on terms with Dan Nogales. Are we going to see a Spaniard on the podium in Senior X30? There's two of them up there in the top five. Nogales and Lahoz, third and fifth at the moment. But Tyler Reed is still determined to get into P3. So Behrman leads, McDonald's second. Nogales, Reed and Lahoz, third, fourth, fifth. Then it's Kimber, Rowledge, Vava, Ruben Moyer and Sean Butcher in the top 10. Then Matilda Olsen and Morgan Porter, Guillermo de Oliveira and Kian Shields. Then Marty Boyer and Ivan Bataya, Guy Cunnington and Javier Hansen. From Lewis Gilbert and Eduardo Cossetang. But Gilbert Hansen, uh, Gilbert's got past Hansen, Chichko has got past Cossetang now. As this third place battle rages. Well after that incident with Bradshaw, it's kind of fizzled out a little bit in the top five. Although Reed and Nogales are still third and fourth battling away. Look at Behrman though. Just dancing his way through the curves here. If he continues the way he is going, he's going to become the first man in Ayami racing history to win the Winter Cup in back-to-back -back years in two different classes. It's never been done before. And Dean McDonald has given it everything he's got. He was the title winner last year. He loves coming back to this event. But second best will have to do for Dean McDonald. And he doesn't normally have to settle for second place. But there's a new guard, a change of the order. Look at Behrman, he's just streaking away. 2.6 is now the gap as Behrman continues down the straight. And I think he knows now he's just got to count down these last three laps before the party can really start. What a sensational weekend it's been in the Army Winter Cup. But what a fantastic result it's going to be in the top three. Three drivers who utterly deserve to be there are going to be there the way things currently stand. Oliver Behrman leading the way comfortably and streaking ahead. Dean McDonald in second place after an amazing comeback. And in third, Daniel Nogales has fought his way back from the brink. Eighth on the starting grid for this final. And he's now in third. What a great run from Dan Nogales. I'm glad we're focusing in on him here. Because Dan Nogales has got on with the job fairly evenly and fairly calmly through the weekend. He's not always been the fastest, but he and Lahoz were mighty together in qualifying. And Dan Nogales is one of the underdogs of this Spanish racing scene, certainly in the Army Euro Series paddock. He's barely had a look in before. And now, with two to go, he is opening up the taps and getting away from Reed and Lahoz. Now, for sixth position, this could be a good fight to the end. Rowledge has come to the front of the queue now. In front of Kimber and Vava, but now Kimber gets through, Vava gets through, Rowledge trying to fend off from Ruben Moyer, and here comes Sean Butcher on the inside. Sean Butcher tugs it round the outside and manages to hang on to the place in front of Ruben Moyer, and behind them we've got Matilda Olsen. She's running well, trying to get back into position, and Morgan Porter in the other Argenti is in the mix there as well. A nice little race this in the midfield. But it's looking good for Kimber to hang on to sixth position. And there's Ruben Moyer up the inside of Sean Butcher. He makes a big dive. This is what I love about X30 Racing. Even if you're not focusing on the top end of the field, there's so much to do in the mid-back as Vava hustles Kimber down to the chicane. Can he get there? He's not going to be close enough this time as we go into the final lap. Here comes the man of a sixth place. And Kimber is defending like mad. Vava, seventh. Moyer, eighth. But this man is leading in fine style. I've been watching this kid develop, not just in Britain, but over the European scene as well. 
just as it was in 2018, the KR Sport number 259 is going to get the Senior X30 title in the Army Winter Cup. Two years ago, that man was Clayton Ravenscroft. This year, it's Oliver Behrman. 12 months ago, he won the junior title in absolutely fantastic style. But now, something that's never been achieved in the Army Winter Cup as he checks over his shoulder just to make sure nobody's won back-to-back -back titles in two different classes. Last year, he won in junior. This year, he wins in senior. Oliver Behrman wins! Absolutely brilliant! Domination! Thy name is Behrman! Oliver Behrman sweeps all before him despite the challenge from so many of the big guns. Bradshaw, McDonald, Reed, Kimber, they all had their chances, but nobody could beat the pint-sized powerhouse. Oliver Behrman dominates in the Senior X30 final. Unprecedented. Back-to-back -back title winner across junior and senior and the second man in history to win a second Army Winter Cup. Oliver Behrman from Dean McDonald and Daniel Nadalis. Tyler Reed is fourth from Alejandro Lajas. Philip Varva and Ruben Moya. Mark Kimber and Matilda Olsen from Morgan Porter, Sean Butcher and Guillermo de Oliveira in 12th. 13th is Josh Rowledge from Marty Boyer and Kean Shields. Ivan Mataya and Guy Cunnington. Louis Gilbert, Javier Hansen and Eduardo Cossateg in the top 20. From Jose Vea, Herbert Smoor, Magic Chichko and Zach Ripley. 25th is Rivaldo van der Westerlaken in front of Alessandro Serenetti. Sam Belota is 27th from Schimpf and Barrett. Then Karjalainen, Max Meyer, Honey Sands and Teddy Williams with just three retirements in the rest. Callum Bradshaw, Harry Platton and Connor Jupp. Absolutely exceptional racing and it's been an absolutely incredible weekend. We have our three title winners. We'll get the official confirmation from the podium ceremony later. Do stick around on our live stream because we'll have the podium ceremony as soon as the official results are confirmed. What a race weekend the IRB Winter Cup has given us, promoted by RGMMC. Muchas gracias from everybody around the circuit and everybody from tuning in, wherever you have and however you have done so. I'm Jake Sanson. Bring on the IAMA Euro Series. We regain in Marienburg at the end of March. But join us for the podium later on when we'll crown our three title winners in the IAMA Winter Cup. Bye for now. Hi, I'm Tom Ingram and you're listening to Downforce Radio. Hi, I'm Jack Villeneuve, you're listening to Downforce Radio. Hi, I'm Bruno Senna, you're listening to Downforce Radio. Hi, I'm Chris Hoy and you're listening to Downforce Radio. Hi, I'm Landon Norris and you're listening to Downforce Radio.